Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel Hattie Homemaking where I make videos on homemaking, femininity and slow and simple living. So in today's video I wanted to talk about my weight loss and my posture journey. Over the past couple of months I mentioned it in a recent vlog and asked if you would like to see a video on it and someone replied yes and that's all I needed, one person. <laughs> so that's what we're going to talk about today sort of my whole body glow up transformation that I decided I wanted to do. So I'll give you a little bit of a backstory, I'm not going to make it go on too long because I used to be obsessed with watching weight loss videos and it used to just drive me mad when they spoke too much about their backstory and the childhood and everything. So I'm just going to give you a small backstory and then get straight into it. So I have always really been around the same weight growing up and then around the age of 15 I I started calorie counting, got way too obsessed with it, lost far too much weight and sort of got a bit of an eating disorder which I'm not going to get too much into. Luckily at the time was when I met Paul as well so he helped me with that. I never got any official diagnosis or official help but Paul can tell you now I really was not well at all. So after getting better from that I have been since that point completely scared to diet or do anything again because I didn't want to get myself back into that place. So when I met Paul in the first year and a half I gained 30 pounds which was completely fine, healthy weight that I needed to gain since I was underweight. However since that point I think I've been gaining contentment pounds, <laughs> what I like to call them and just me and Paul we're massive food lovers. Paul is an amazing cook and I just was slowly gaining more and more weight so over the past say two or three years I just got to a point where I just wasn't 100% happy with the way I was looking, I was finding I was much more self-conscious wearing different clothes but most of all the biggest thing is I just didn't feel healthy, I felt like I was lacking in energy, my skin wasn't as good and I did just feel almost physically like the weight I had gained was pulling me down. So fast forward then to last year Paul proposed to me in February which was amazing obviously then everything with corona happened we were actually supposed to be getting married in like a week <laughs> 17th of April was our original day but let's not talk about that too much <laughs> so I went wedding dress shopping in around June of last year and I remember saying to the bridal consultant that I was absolutely certain I didn't want to lose any weight so at that point I didn't want to lose any weight I bought a dress and I went for my first fit in. Then someone took some pictures of me in the dress and afterwards I just had a moment of realisation where I was like, I really just don't want to look like this on my wedding day. The first thing I noticed was my posture it was so poor. It really just, I felt like I was standing up straight and the picture told a completely different story. Maybe after the wedding, I will show you those pictures to show you what I meant. Um, I don't want anyone to see me in a wedding dress before the actual day. So that's why I won't insert any pictures here. But after I got those pictures, I realized that my face just looked really bloated and I felt like you couldn't see the features in my face. I just felt, those pictures were my moment of realisation really where I just thought I want to be my best self on my wedding day and I need to work out a way of how I can do that without getting too obsessive and too extreme with my dieting so that's what I want to tell you how I did. So I have my little weight loss notebook I've been keeping a diary the whole way through and I just want to share with you um, the first thing I did so at the start of this year I did a video on about how to glow up which explains all sort of the psychology of weight loss and things like that since I do have a degree in nutrition so I will link that below so that sort of um I took my own advice and I wrote down my reasons why so my main reason was to look and feel my best on my wedding day and I wanted to be proud of the pictures on my wedding day. They last a lifetime and I really wanted them to be something I was proud of. I wanted to get in the best possible health because I just didn't feel healthy at the time. And also my last point was I wanted to give myself focus, achieve something and get out of bad lifestyle habits that I created. So that was my why. 
then I wrote down my goals. So my goals were number one, to improve the posture. In a lot of ways, my posture was actually more important to me than the weight loss. Number two was I wanted to lose about 20 pounds. And number three was I wanted to do some form of regular exercise, whatever that may be. So they were my goals. So now for the next portion of the video, I'm gonna talk about how I actually lost the weight and the different steps and techniques I use. So I'm gonna talk about that. And then in the end portion, I'll put timestamps on it as well. I will talk about how I am improving my posture, how I have improved it and how I'm continuing to improve it too. So I'm just gonna get straight on into the weight loss tips now. Okay, so the first thing I did, which I know is controversial to some people and a lot of people frown on this technique but I did go into calorie counting however I went with a completely different mind than I used to have when I was way too obsessive I said to myself I wanted to be in a calorie deficit over the course of the whole week so say for example I had one day where we wanted a special meal or we wanted to do something or say for example I was just having a really hungry day I would then just balance that out over the course of the week the next important thing to say is I actually did the work to work out what calories I should be on rather than just, I know a lot of these calorie counters like Fitness Pal, you enter your details in and they pretty much come out at 1,200 for every single person, no matter your goals. It's just strange, it always just comes out at 1,200 and it does for me. So I know deep down that that is not enough for me, especially if I was gonna be exercising as well. So I did the work to actually find out what calories I wanted to be on. So I will link a video below about how I calculated my calories. The girl on this video explains it really well and there's no point me trying to say the exact same thing. So I will leave the link below about how to calculate your calories. But then it's also worth noting that I've been very, very days almost. I've been quite half-hearted in my approach to lose weight. So it's taken me nine months. It's been a slow process and that is a reason why I think I've been so successful at it because it's not been like a rush there's been no pressure and along the way I've said to myself if I'm having a day where I just really I feel my body fighting against it I feel really hungry I just almost just don't do it <laughs> I've had so many weeks or two weeks at a time where I've just lost interest in that goal and almost let myself have that time off and I think what's important when you're working towards a goal is understanding the fact that you've not failed until you've completely given up and I think a lot of people have that diet mentality especially even just on one day where they feel like they've gone a little bit wrong and then they feel like okay well I'll just start tomorrow and then they throw that day out the window whereas for me I've kept such an open mind in terms of days where sometimes in the morning I might want a really high fat high sugar breakfast and then I just balance out in the rest of the day or if I have a day where it's just through the roof with the calories I will just do my best to then balance it out on the other days but I have just been really really slow and sustainable with it and I really really think that is the key and I think it's a reason why I've continued to lose weight without it actually having much of an impact on my life I kind of do it on the days I want to do it I don't on other days and over time over nine months that amounts to a huge effort rather than if I was to hit my goals every single day for four months yes I probably would have lost the same amount of weight but the end result would I would have been miserable I would have been hungry all the time and I would have got negative connotations with being on a diet which means that as soon as I got to my goal weight I wouldn't want to think about it anymore and I would just bounce right back up but the way I have done it this time is something I can see myself thinking about for the rest of my life just being more conscious of calories and conscious of food and I've almost developed the trust in myself now that I didn't have before to know that I can have an awareness of calories without that then ending up in an eating disorder and I think that's really important for me to realise myself that it's not just count calories get an eating disorder or eat everything you want in sight and gain weight that is a happy middle ground where you can be conscious to be in the best health that you can possibly be without that affecting you mentally. The good thing about calorie counting as well is you're not cutting out anything that you love anyway. You can fit everything you love within to your allotted calories. Obviously it is important to try and get nutrition from whole foods and things like that but it's just so much more flexible rather than the likes of keto 
and all these different diets that exist it just lets you eat everything and it just makes perfect sense I'm quite like a scientific person and I quite like numbers so for me it just makes sense to calorie count because you know what you're getting you know what you're eating you know what the effects will be whereas sometimes with other diets I find the effects can really vary based on person they can vary based on each day and for me calorie counting is just a sure thing and I really like the fact that I can fit a little bit of chocolate into every day to be honest. <laughs> the other thing I did as well was I dabbled a little bit in intermittent fasting again the same as the calorie counting it's not something I did every day so so some days I would have days where I genuinely just would not be hungry until one o'clock there's other days where I would wake up and by 10 o'clock I would be absolutely ravenous so on days like that I wouldn't do it. I would say I probably did intermittent fasting maybe about 75% of the time. Over the past two weeks I've not done it at all just because I've really been craving a cup of tea in the morning that's really all it is <laughs> but I definitely think intermittent fasting is a really good tool especially I think if you're getting to a stage with your calorie count and where you're plateauing it's just a nice additional thing to throw in there maybe towards the end of your journey that really helps things get moving. I also find with intermittent fasting as well it's great for your appetite control. I find it it's a really natural appetite suppressant and I think that is just the simple fact that you're eating bigger portions within a shorter amount of time so naturally you feel fuller and also I do think sometimes with intermittent fasting you can feel really hungry in the morning but then if you just have a glass of water you can push past that initial hunger spike and then you feel absolutely fine again until lunch so it's definitely something worth considering I know again with every diet and technique there are strong opinions out there and a lot of people say intermittent fasting is just a fancy way of saying you're starving yourself I personally don't agree I think it's a really useful tool if you are being sensible about your weight loss you're not starving yourself and it's just another little tool that you can throw in there the next thing I want to talk about is the fact that Paul got an exercise bike for his birthday and ever since I have been absolutely obsessed with it. I think until that point I was trying to exercise regularly. I was doing a couple of different YouTube challenges that you do and personally for me I've realised I'm just not someone who enjoys high intensity exercise. I find I just I almost get annoyed with it <laughs> and I get annoyed having to follow different rules, not rules, different moves and I just find I'm quite uncoordinated and I get confused and I just genuinely don't really enjoy it but ever since I've got an exercise bike it's so low effort just to quickly throw some leggings on get on and do some spinning for half an hour and listen to music and I love to cycle in time to the music so I think that's something that's really helped me is finding an exercise that I genuinely really really love because even on the days where I don't think I can be bothered doing it all it takes is the tiniest amount of activation energy just to go and get on the bike and then within five minutes I've realised that I'm enjoying myself anyway and the key I think with cardiovascular exercise like running, walking, cycling, anything like that is definitely to get a good playlist. I just love listening to music. I have an array of different songs so I have some faster ones where I'll go faster then I have some more relaxing and slow ones so it almost works out like a hit work out as well naturally because I speed up on the fast songs and then go slower as well so with the bike my aim has been half an hour at least three to four times a week sometimes I'll do even more recently I've been doing 45 minutes as well and then some days I'll do less I'll just do quarter of an hour 20 minutes but the key is like my goals originally stated I just wanted to do some form of activity every day so I highly recommend finding an exercise that you genuinely really enjoy okay so that's kind of it for my weight loss it's been calorie counting a little bit of intimate fasting and going on the bike regularly that's it there's obviously other things that help that a lot of people do talk about like drinking a lot of water making sure you're hydrated eating high volume foods so foods that you can eat a lot of for very little calories to help keep you full there's loads of different techniques but that is the basics of what I've done and I think the key point to take from here is 
no matter what you do in terms of trying to lose weight, I think the key thing is to take it slow and sustainable. Don't put too much pressure on yourself and see it as more of a lifestyle change. I know that sounds wishy-washy, but it really is the key that I found for me of being able to do it over a long period of time, not losing an extreme dramatic amount of weight really quickly and letting it be something that is just a little bit more natural and letting my body adjust, letting myself adjust. And I definitely think I have more chance of keeping it off with that approach. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about my posture and how I corrected my posture. Let me just preface this by saying I'm still working on it. So sometimes you will see I do, I have a terrible habit of slouching and there's been a, a number of reasons why I have developed bad posture and I think the number one thing I've done to address it is understanding the root causes. So the first thing, I think it's a confidence thing with me. I think deep down I'm actually quite a shy person so when I'm in the room with a lot of people my natural inclination is to make myself smaller so I hunch <laughs> and it's a way almost that I feel protected and I think that's something that I need to work on with time is confidence and I think that's something that has definitely improved in the last couple of years but like with everything it's something that is going to take time so that's one of the reasons. The next reason is how I was sitting at my desk in work was completely wrong so since then I've asked work for a laptop razor so that I'm not looking down like that. I actually realised how heavy your head is so think about it. Let me just show you on the side. <laughs> So if you're looking down on your laptop like that and you're pulling your head forward, naturally because your head is so heavy, it pulls your whole body forward. Whereas if you look up, it's so much easier to set your shoulders back, type away. <laughs> And it's, yeah, it's just so much easier to keep a good posture if your head is in the right position. So that's the first thing I did. And then I also asked for a separate keyboard, full works. So that is one of the things I addressed. Obviously, if you are working and you work at a desk a lot, if you don't address the way you sit at a desk, then it's gonna be really hard to change your posture. So work with your workplace to make sure that your desk is set up right. That's actually one of their responsibilities for you as an employee to make sure that you are all set up and your health and safety in work is taken into account and that includes posture. The next thing I noticed I was doing and I think this is a huge thing for everyone during the past year is spending a lot of time on laptops and phones. Again, it's the head thing of looking down. So what I said to myself is that's not gonna change at the moment. I don't have enough to do in the day in terms of going out because most of the things we can do in the country is still locked down so that's not going to change anytime soon but what I said to myself is I spend a lot of time in this room because Paul works in the living room at the moment so I actually installed a tv <laughs> in this room that's on the wall so when I'm watching tv now I'm looking up rather than before I was on my bed looking at my laptop and hunching over so by doing those two things of addressing my work setup and then also my free time setup and how I carry myself then, I feel like naturally that's had a huge effect. So now I'm gonna talk about something that I literally cannot praise enough. So I actually got this posture correction belt from Amazon. So basically it's got this steel plate that goes along your spine then it has straps that go over your shoulders it goes it ties around your waist and then you pull it tight and immediately your shoulders set back like it's impossible to have bad posture when you've got that on so recently i've been wearing this for a minimum of half an hour a day some days longer some days i wear it for like three hours which is the maximum they say you can't wear it for any longer than three hours and i find this has just had the biggest effect and now i find even when i'm not wearing it subconsciously i'm just used to like i get a bit of muscle memory now of sitting upright and pulling my shoulders back so it's been really really useful i think there's a lot of different back posture support online and the reviews for a lot of them are really bad because they go under your arm and sort of cut in there but the way this is shaped is you don't get any pain with it the reviews are really really good so i'm gonna link this below as well it's from amazon so i'll leave a link below if you're interested so along with that the other important thing with me 
is once you've had bad posture for quite a while you develop both tightnesses in some muscles and then weaknesses in other muscles so you get like a weak back and weak um rear delts with the back of your shoulder so something i've been doing to address that i have a band a resistance band and one of the really easy moves i've done is so you hold it like that and all you do is you just pull it back like that i'm probably got really bad form right now because i don't want to the bed is sort of blocking me but that's something really really good i will leave linked below um some youtube videos i've followed that address and um, building the muscles up in your back and exercises that you can do from home I will also leave linked below a video that I've been doing for stretching. So as I mentioned, you also get tightness in some regions and that's across your chest most of the time. So I've also been doing some stretches and a really easy stretch you can do is by putting your elbow on a door and then sort of twisting away from it and it just stretches out all this region and it just loosens it and makes it a lot easier to keep yourself upright. So that is all my tips on how I have improved my posture. I think bad posture is something that takes years to create so it also is probably going to take years to reduce however I would say I've been working on it now for again about seven months but really seriously since I got this um posture correction belt the last month has when I've really really seen a lot of progress so there are my tips on how I've had a total body transformation glow up in terms of weight loss and posture I really hope you have enjoyed this video please leave any questions below if you have any and things that I might have forgotten to mention or you just have any questions about what I have said so I hope you have enjoyed this video I hope you've got some useful tips from it and I will see you in my next video